really was in so much energy. Oh. So I went upstairs earlier today to check on how everyone's doing or what everyone's doing. There's a rule here. <laughs> at far whatever. And at most nights, while the show is going on, you know we have an interval, it's coming up, but it's not yet. So when someone is talking on stage or someone is here, because this is a very hard job to do, yeah. please be quiet and respectful. <laughs> so back to the story. I went upstairs earlier to check on the act and see what everyone's doing. And I went to this next act and he seemed lovely, he seemed really charming. And I was like, what are you gonna do? And he was like, stand up comedy. I was like, great. I was like, is there anything you want me to say before your act? And he was like, I probably remind you of that guy that you blocked on Grindr. And I was like, cool. I'm all for second chances. Maybe a little suspicious, but I'm sure it's absolutely gonna be amazing. If we can start the applause and the cheering at this table here. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Good evening everyone, my name is CJ and I would like to tell you a story, if I may, quite a traumatic story about my first uh, experience at a gay sex party in London. Um, I'm going to lower the tone, I'm just going to put that up right now. Okay, now, just so you know, sex parties are not really my normal place I would hang out. I get very anxious at parties, I get very anxious during sex, so the combination of two, not a good idea for someone like me, but I like to class myself as a chromosexual, which means I fear missing out on having sex more than I enjoy actually having it. <laughs> So before we get to the sex party, I'm going to tell you some information about me so this sex party makes more sense. Now, uh, I've been very unlucky in love. In fact, my dating history is like a gay Henry VIII. Cheated on, cheated on, lied, cheated on, cheated on, drug addict. So, <laughs> my last ex likes to cheat on me. He loved to cheat on me. It was like a hobby for him. As Lady Gaga would say, there could be a hundred people in a room and my ex has fucked them all. <laughs> Now on top of the bad love life, uh, I have something else. It's quite personal that I'm going to share with you. Uh, something else that made me quite subconscious going to a gay sex party in London. Uh, that's my, um, my tiny penis. Now, I know this is going to be difficult for you to grasp. <laughs> you don't know more about me. I've always struggled to fit in with other gay men and fit into them. <laughs> <laughs> a lifetime of insecurities about my size. If people ask, are you a grower or a shower? I just say, no. <laughs> I had a circumcision at the age of 20, which I like to refer to as my penis sale, as they took half off. <laughs> so, and luckily though, I'm part of the most accepting and least judgmental community that there is. <laughs> the gay male community. <laughs> 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 Ah yes, the gay male community are really streamlining any source of communication just to go for instant gratification. The gay male community, where apparently an acceptable form of saying hello is the dick and or hole pick. <laughs> it's not. Let me tell you this about a tasteful nude. A tasteful nude can be great when it's consensual, when it's agreed upon, right time, right place. I was at work the other day and a stranger on Instagram sent me a message of their hole directly after they finished having sex. Aww. I know, I didn't think it was a good idea, or as I like to refer to it, a prolapse of judgment. <laughs> And here's the thing, where I struggle with dating apps, dating apps, and grinder nowadays, everyone prefaces their name with their size. You get XXL male, and you get horse hung hue. <laughs> and there's me in the corner, small size, but lovely eyes. <laughs> People, my friends always say to me, Chris, you shouldn't use grinder. you shouldn't use grinder. it's bad for your mental health. I think grinder's great. Just last week, I had a submissive slave come around and do my laundry. <laughs> And let me tell you this, I'm good at sex. 
<laughs> Since moving to London, I've had sex with a few guys, and they will tell you, after all is said and done, when they left my bedroom, that's it, they just left. I never saw them again. But... <laughs> I think I had a good time. And the other problem I have, I'm technically classed as a dumb power top. Now, let me break this down for you. First of all, dominant. I like to consider myself as librarian dominant, which means I'll shush you a couple of times and nothing more. <laughs> Power. I have the power, I just don't have the tool. It's like being a professional chef of an easy bake oven. I have a ton of energy and a diminutive size. Do you know who I am? I'm the scrappy do of anal sex. So let me just catch everyone up. I'm lucky in love. I'm like my little pony, scrappy do. <laughs> All right, so we get to the sex party. I knew I wasn't going to fit in at the sex party right away, but my friends bought poppers and lube. I bought a quiche. <laughs> <laughs> I start my journey in the kitchen where I think to preheat the oven. And a man with a girly jaw comes up and he's drooling, and I don't think it's over my bacon. <laughs> Um, I'm not very good with kinks. I'm quite, I, I'm quite sexually naive. I'm not even joking. When for a long time I thought a power bottom was a lovely pair of jeans. <laughs> so this man asked me if I wanted a palm job, and I politely declined and walked away. If you're curious as to what that is, a palm job is where they whack you off and read your fortune at the same time. <laughs> it's great. Now I turn around, and there is a mountain of men having sex. Just a pit of flesh having sex. It is like a zombie apocalypse movie with lovely hair. <laughs> Limbs are flying everywhere. Literally, a man named Noah asked me to hold his prosthetic leg so he didn't get lost in the shuffle. <laughs> I didn't actually know if this man's name was Noah, but I called him Noah because he was taking men two by two. <laughs> now, all I had to do to join him in the sex party was have sex. But no, I brought the one thing these guys did not want. I brought conversation. <laughs> Which evidently was difficult because everyone's mouths were full. So, <laughs> so I decided to back away from the sex. For the first three hours, I served refreshments. <laughs> Time passes, and amongst a few men fingering, I'm thumbing through Michelle Obama's autobiography, becoming Michelle Obama. <laughs> You're probably wondering which parts of this show are true or false. That is actually fucked. <laughs> it's a really good book. Um, yes. Um, and then a man comes up, comes up to me and he says, do you like fishing? I'm like, great, I don't like fishing, but conversation. I said, I love fishing. And he gave me a latex glove. He was talking about fisting and how I was in a situation. <laughs> but I said, come on, CJ, this is it. You're going to throw yourself in at the deep end. The deep end scene was Greg. <laughs> he turns around to me, Greg turns around, he says, shall we get started? I said, if you insist, insist, insist. <laughs> Greg gets up on the sofa as his legs rise, so does my anxiety. <laughs> Greg starts slipping off the sofa, I start panicking, he says, give me a hand, I said, I'm trying! <laughs> my friends, how do you go into something like fisting if you've never fisted someone before? And then I remembered something that I used to do when I was younger, whenever I used to panic about anything. This little piggy went to market. <laughs> this little piggy sat at home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little pig had none. And this little pig went, should we just shake hands? Should we hold hands? Should we hold hands? Hold hands? Hold hands? And then what happened next? I wish this wasn't true. What happened next? Greg took my hand and placed it into him. <laughs> Don't applaud that. <laughs> Traumatic experience. So I didn't really quite know what to do there. I couldn't look. I couldn't look. So I just, I came up with a scheme. I came up with a method. I'm quite creative. So I was like looking back. And do you know when you leave the house and you forget your keys and they're on the table? So you reach back through the door and you just rummage. <laughs> I did that. It works. It seemed to be working. So let me set the scene. At this stage, I'm on my knees, Greg on one arm, prosthetic leg in the other. <laughs> a very handsome, dashing man walks up to me and he says, close your eyes. And I was like, hope it's romantic. I was like, okay, let's go. I close my eyes. And what happened next was pure poetry. On my knees, my eyes are closed. This is it, true love's first kiss. 
I feel a warmth. I'm feeling wet. Oh wait, I'm covered in this piss. <laughs> Verse two. I turn around to Greg and I say, I think it's time I leave. I left the room. They were no longer wearing bread upon my sleeve. <laughs> I think Clinton's card should sign me up, really. <laughs> so I leave this room and I'm in the line for what I think is the bathroom, but no. I'm in the line to have sex with a man named Sue. Now, I didn't know his actual name, but I called him Sue because he was being passed around a group of men on a lazy Susan. It's <laughs> enchanting these sex boys. Now, I'm in this line, I go in. Now, I always say this, to each your own and how you bone. However you want to have sex, you do whatever you want to do, no judgment. But, Sue had just finished being penetrated by two very well endowed men at the same time, and they all turned around and looked at me and went, Your turn? <laughs> My turn? This is crappy, do of anal sex. These guys do not understand. Do you know what I bring to the bedroom? Enthusiasm. <laughs> Sometimes a quiche. <laughs> so now looking at me, my turn. Uh, this is my thing as well, okay? The plot twist here. My penis is actually of a good size, but since moving to London, I've found that assholes are getting bigger. It's true. <laughs> we can't keep up with the supply and demand of what is expected of us anymore. <laughs> Do you know what it is? It's anal inflation, literally. <laughs> looking at us, they want me to do my turn. I look down at scrappies, I'm not going in there. I can't use my arm again. I'm a people pleaser, I think I've got to do something. Everyone's looking at me. And then I remember, I've got the prosthetic leg. <laughs> oh yes. Months are being asked, is it in yet? It is in yet. Let me tell you, it was in! <laughs> now I'm not a monster. I took the shoe off first. <laughs> But the message behind this very poignant story of fucking somebody with a prosthetic leg um, is sometimes there's going to be really high expectations of you in life and all you can do is put your best foot forward. <laughs> or nervous. <laughs> it didn't go down well. Uh, I, was, I, I was asked to leave the sex party. They didn't like my metaphor. The gays turned to me and they said, leave, get out. I said, fine, I don't need this sex party. I left, and as I was going to the door, I turned around, and like a queen being eliminated on Drag Race, I said my final words. I said, I don't need your party, this environment's so heinous, you will never touch my cock, and you will never see my anus! Now, I'm about to finish my beautiful Disney tale, and thank you for following me on this tale. I will say this, on a serious note, I'm very new to stand-up comedy, and my dream at the moment is to do a one-man show, and luckily this sex party was quite true, I haven't got to the dark room, and there's a lot of this story still to go. <laughs> so if you'd like to follow and support, please follow me on my Instagram, I am the CJ Hopkins, C for cock, J for jockey, Hopkins, right there on Instagram. I shall be putting up sets and doing all my stuff, please come. Uh, it would be great to finish the story with you all, but I will end the story on this. So I've left this sex party, I'm stood outside, my head held high, dignity intact, quiche in hand, covered in this. <laughs> A young man is walking towards the sex party, and he looks at me and he says, excuse me sir, um, does it cost anything to go into that sex party? And I turned to him and I said, I don't know about you young man, but it cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> thank you very much, thank you.